here for another edition of Women's Health Weekly. We have an incredibly exciting agenda today, a fantastic guest, and we're really excited to introduce Dr. Simran Rattan, uh, who is a native of Toronto, Ontario, and we have some fantastic topics to talk about today. So Dr. Rattan trained with um, somebody who you may or may not know if you're involved at all in integrative medicine and wellness and spirituality. Uh, you may know this name, uh, a man named Dr. Andrew Weil, the person who's taught everybody else around the world about the value of integrative medicine. He's brought the world of Western science and good science into understanding into creating our understanding as a medical profession and as a profession of people who take care of patients using integrative approaches he's brought that science into our understanding and that's what we're going to talk about today so let's jump right into it dr Rattan. so the first thing that comes to my mind and i imagine this is the first thing that comes to the mind of other people as well is you say spirituality i think religion tell me why i'm wrong Spirituality is not just religion. Um, it's basically about what you want in your life that gives you meaning, that gives you purpose, what brings you joy. So it's like almost like a different mindset that we think of. We think that it has to be, you know, okay, I have a particular practice that I do, and that may be the case for some people. Maybe it is a meditation practice. Maybe it's a yoga practice. Maybe it's something that gives them joy or brings meaning in their life. But everyone is seeking meaning and purpose in their life, and that's what spirituality is, is what gives me meaning what gives me purpose? What kind of connections do I have? What relationships and how they play out or be expressed in our daily lives? So people who don't yeah. generally consider themselves to be religious, they don't go to a religious service on a regular basis, they don't regularly talk to um, some sort of religious leader, uh, whatever that religion may be, they can still have a level of spirituality that's at a very high level um, because yeah. they're connected to the things that give them meaning, give their lives meaning, give them give them joy. In the Western society, we tend to feel like spirituality is private, but in most other places in the world, spirituality is actually the opposite. It's pretty open, right? Um, and, that, and so we engage in things. We think that it is relationships between us and other people, looking for meaningful relationships, looking for um, connection, looking for things that bring us joy, basically anything that uplifts your spirit. So a good question to ask is like, ask yourself is, you know, what, what uplifts my spirit today? Or you know, how are my spirits today? Are they high? Are they low? You know, we say that in a figure of speech. So, so it's almost like that's similar to what we're saying. What are the needs of our deeper spirit? And so, you know, it gets into this whole like, well, the people who don't have a uplifted spirit, they are in something that's called spiritual distress. And that's a different topic. But that's pretty much, um, you know, understanding that giving what gives you meaning in your life, what brings purpose, what's joy, and how that is connected in your relationships. Maybe it is something sacred. Maybe it does include religion, but maybe it's just you trying to be connected to the things that you love. It almost makes me think about the opportunity for someone to keep track, to keep a diary, mm -hmm. um, to keep a log of yeah. what they felt connected to on that day, what lifted them up mm -hmm. emotionally or what made them mm -hmm. feel anxious, sad, depressed, or stressed. Um, is yeah. that a, a strategy that you use with people who to whom you're coaching or taking care of as health partners? Right now, especially with all the you know pandemic and everything going on, what I say is, you know, we may not be able to think right now what is the meaning of our whole life, or what brings us purpose in our whole life right now. But what we can do is, on a daily basis, I say at the beginning of your day, you know, you can either ask what is your meaning for today going to be, or what is your purpose. And if you haven't found that, then look at the end of the day and go, hold on, let me look back and see what gave me purpose and meaning. And here's an example, you know, um, you're you're you know you're hanging out at home and maybe you are baking something and you felt very creative well creativity is part of your spirituality because now you're 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 kind of um nurturing nourishing that that need to be creative and so i tell people just look back and see on your day what gave you purpose well i actually had a purpose today. i felt uplifted by doing this this and this and that really nourished my my well-being and who i am and the core of who i am because i need the, i have a need to be creative i definitely want to get to spiritual distress because this is the so this is almost sort of like the downside is, what, is the opposite of what we have to talk of with regard to having a conversation <laughs> about the upside. But I want to lay a foundation for that. A high level of spirituality as wellness 
than yeah. or a wellness state than a low level of spirituality or, or otherwise what you're terming spiritual distress could potentially mean a disease state. And if we're thinking about it in those terms, I need to lay a foundation and I'd like to do that now. So when we talk about spiritual distress, we're not really saying it's a, like they're um, a lower level of spirituality. What we're saying is that they're having conflict within, maybe with something of their beliefs or their values and things that are impeding on their belief. Um, for example, if, uh, and you're right, like if someone it has a disease state, they might be in spiritual distress. But I'm in prevention medicine, so I'm also looking at spiritual distress in the preventive side, which is honestly not really... As, um, as I guess noticeable because they're pretty much all healthy and you know do, trying to stay prevented to be uh, healthy they're trying to stay healthy but then you look at the palliative side where they are you're right in a disease state and then they're like okay I want to get this but there is a d different degrees I'm noticing of spiritual distress there's really bad dis spiritual distress and then there's maybe a crisis you could call it a crisis spiritual crisis in the beginning stages of prevention that makes sense for you but like but there is a variety and it doesn't necessarily mean that spiritual distress is all um, has to be this really big thing because people um, if they're completely healthy can also um, feel that distress tell me how spirituality makes wellness makes people feel better and, and makes people less sick and live longer People who engage regularly in spiritual path has an increase in quality of life, have uh, become more resilient, and this is the biggest thing I think is huge, is they live 7 to 13 years longer than those who do not and have less incidence of diseases. Now that's a huge number. 7 to 13 years longer just by engaging in things that are vital and sacred and important to you that give you meaning and purpose. I mean, no pill does that, right? And they end up having no. to cope better as well when they do get diseases. Everything we do, we don't even realize this, but everything we do in our life, any decisions we make, any, and especially during decisions, is based on what we believe and what we value. Mm -hmm.